This week we're learning about enzymes and enzymes are a great example of proteins that are acting like little robots. What is an enzyme? Oh, let me go ahead and write here as if I'm writing on the whiteboard in blue pen. Okay, what is an enzyme? First of all, an enzyme is almost always a protein. You should know that, that'll be on next week's quiz. Uh, there is an exception to the rule, but you know, when instructors say that enzymes are always proteins, I don't have any trouble with that because the exception is minor. And then enzymes act as uh, catalysts. Sorry, catalysts. An enzyme is a catalyst. Now, catalysts are substances that make chemical reactions happen faster. Oops, that's supposed to be an H, happen faster, right? Catalysts are substances that make chemical reactions happen faster. You know, there was a time when um, scientists were busy trying to turn uh, lead into gold, uh, things like that. And uh, back then, uh, they knew all about catalysts. Uh, and it was surprising um, to them, not that there were catalysts that existed, but it was surprising to them when someone discovered a biomolecule, a molecule made by living things, a biomolecule that acted as a catalyst. And those uh, biomolecules are called organic because they're based on carbon, carbon, and an organic catalyst is an enzyme, right? So what is an enzyme? An enzyme is an organic catalyst. An enzyme is a substance that makes a chemical reactions happen faster. Enzymes are almost always proteins. Okay. Now, enzymes do not make things happen that would not normally happen. It just makes them happen much more quickly, right? This is the enzyme that you will be dealing with in your online lab. And luckily for me, it's the same enzyme that we work with um, when we're doing in real life labs. And in this situation, the name of the enzyme is catalase, C-A-T-A. L-A-S-E. You know, I don't know for sure. I got to look this up. But I think catalase might be the very first enzyme that was ever discovered. And the reason that I'm thinking that is that, do you see how its name kind of says catalyst? Um, it might be the very first enzyme because it has a more modern name. And its more modern name is peroxidase. We're gonna talk a little bit about the naming of enzymes. This is an old fashioned name. The new names, first of all, they always end in ASC. So if you're ever taking one of my quizzes and I ask you which one of these is likely to be an enzyme, you find the one with the ASC at the end, that's the one that's the enzyme. And then the rest of the name is meant to give you a clue as to what it does. I think next week we're gonna be talking about DNA and RNA and the enzyme that makes DNA is called DNA polymerase. Anyway, let's go back to catalase. Now, catalase is going to take a molecule of hydrogen peroxide, and let's practice for our exam. Hydrogen peroxide, H2O2, that represents a molecule that has got two atoms of hydrogen and two atoms of oxygen in each, in each one, right? So catalase is an enzyme that takes hydrogen peroxide and breaks it apart. And it breaks it apart into oxygen and a water molecule. Let's talk about that a little bit more. The chemical reaction in these experiments is to take H2O2 and to turn it into oxygen and water. 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 Sorry. 
Where are you? I'm gone. Hopefully I'll be back someday. Oh, okay. Uh, that is our chemical reaction. Now with chemical reactions, you should know that on the left side of the arrow here, that is what you start with. And the right side of the arrow, that's what you end up with. Left side, what you start with, right side, what you end up with. What you start with in chemistry, what, why did it do that? In chemistry, I think they usually refer to them as reactants, but in biology with enzymes, we generally refer to them as substrates. Now, you can start with one substrate and end up with a couple of products, or you can start with a couple of substrates and end up with one product, okay? The number is not the thing. What you start with is on the left side of the arrow, that is going to be the reactant or the substrate, and on the right side is going to be the products. You need to know for next week's quiz, what is our substrate? Our substrate is hydrogen peroxide. Our substrate is H2O2. What are our products? Our products are oxygen, which is abbreviated O2, and water, which is H2O. Now, what about the enzyme? Where does the enzyme go here? Well, the enzyme could be written a couple of places, but very often I will write the enzyme right above the arrow. Why? Because writing the enzyme right above the arrow tells me that this enzyme is going to make this chemical reaction happen faster, but this enzyme is not a part of the chemical reaction. So let's go back to my analogy about how, um, about how enzymes and proteins in general are like robots, right? And the reason they're like robots is because they do a single thing that they are designed to do. Uh, Catalase is a robot whose only talent in life is grabbing a hydrogen peroxide and ripping it apart. Once that enzyme has ripped it apart, he will let go of the enzyme and um, go back to being ready to grab another hydrogen peroxide. I said let go of the enzyme, that was wrong. Let me try again. Catalase is an enzyme whose only job is being able to grab onto a hydrogen peroxide and rip it apart. And once the enzyme has ripped it apart, it turns into an oxygen and a water. And then the robot, the catalase, will let go of those products and then go back to being ready to catch another substrate. That's our chemical reaction. Now, when you think about it, if I put a catalase into a room with a thousand hydrogen peroxides, that catalase would grab hydrogen peroxide, rip it apart, grab it, rip it apart, grab it, rip it apart. Now, it might take it a little bit of time, but it's going to end up destroying all of that hydrogen peroxide within a few minutes, okay? And what you would be left with would be a bottle of water and the oxygen probably would just uh, diffuse off. But the robots would still be there. If you went back and you put more hydrogen peroxide into the room with the catalase, the catalase would work again. So that belongs here, that enzymes are not used up in chemical reactions. Do they live forever? No, they don't live forever, but they don't get used up. What does get used up? The reactants or the substrates, they get used up. What gets made? The products. All right. So in this one, you can see we're going to start with H2O2, which now you know is hydrogen peroxide. And the hydrogen peroxide is going to bind. You see right here, these areas, those areas that are called active sites, active sites. And then it'll make stuff happen and you will end up with products. By the way, while this is going on, technically the enzyme 
is temporarily binding to part of the substrate. And so technically, just for a millisecond, they are a single molecule, but it's temporary. Ready? So enzymes are a category of proteins, usually proteins, not always, that serve as catalysts. And catalysts are chemicals that increase the rate of chemical reactions, and the catalysts are not changed by the reaction. Remember, they don't get used up. Catalysts also don't change the nature of the reaction. The reaction that catalysts make happen, including enzymes, would have happened anyway, just much, much more slowly. Mm. So for example, hydrogen peroxide. You may have bought hydrogen peroxide to treat uh, some clothing you were wearing or something like that, or a cut, and then you put it under your bathroom sink. If you put it under your bathroom sink a year ago, probably right now you've got a bottle of water under your bathroom sink. Why? Because all on its own, H2O2 falls apart and turns itself into water and oxygen all by itself. But a bottle of hydrogen peroxide might turn into a bottle of water over the course of a year. If you add catalase to it, it'll turn into a bottle of water in an hour, right? How do enzymes work? It might be good just to memorize this. They decrease the energy of activation needed for a reaction. That is enzyme kinetics and it's a little bit physics and I think that's a little too far for this course, but memorize the explanation could be on an exam, okay? So how do enzymes work? I've already kind of told you about this. Let's review it again. Each enzyme has got an area that has an active site. And why does it have an active site? The active sites are gonna be like the little grabby hands of our robot enzyme. Now, every protein, and you should know this from going over the lecture videos, has got 3D conformation, tertiary structure. The conformation means the shape. Just like a robot has a shape, if you put your robot together wrong so that the elbows bend the wrong way, it doesn't work right, okay? Every enzyme also has its own shape, right? And that shape makes it so that there are little areas called active sites that will perfectly fit onto the substrate or substrates. The reactants, the things we start off with are substrates and they fit into the active site like a key into a lock, they fit. And this is the reason that enzymes are specific, all right? The catalase that's in your experiment, it'll break apart hydrogen peroxide, but not water, not blood, not spit, not anything else, okay? Enzymes only do a single job. And yours is catalase, also called peroxidase, and it breaks apart hydrogen peroxide. I already told you this as well, but when a substrate binds to the active site of an enzyme, it's gonna form temporary bonds. And so temporarily, they're going to be a single molecule. Just for like yeah, this long, because it only takes a millisecond before they they switch things and boom, they leave off with the products. And once they leave off with the products, they let go of the products. So you've got your robot at the beginning. You go got your robot at the end. In the middle, he became a part of an enzyme substrate complex. So part of the enzyme temporarily binds parts of the substrate molecules. We will start there at the beginning of the next video.